Welcome to our morning worship for Sunday the 6th of December, the second Sunday of Advent. Deirdre will be speaking to us later on about a voice calling. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that as we come to worship you this morning, we may know the leading of your Holy Spirit. Help us, help us to be open to what you have to say to us. And as we get you in worship, so may we receive. In Christ's name, Amen. Amen. And let's say those familiar words. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy words, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. I'm going to ask Deirdre now to light the candles on our Advent wreath. We lit the first candle to pray for hope. We light the second candle to pray for peace. Peace for ourselves and for the whole world. We ask for the peace of mind that comes from seeing things clearly. We pray for everyone who lives in the midst of conflicts or war, that they may find some sign of peace that shines like this candle flame. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, reign in our hearts and in all the world. Come close to us this Advent. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our first song and let's make it a prayer. A prayer for our church and for ourselves. Build your kingdom. Yeah. 
Our first Bible reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sins have been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the wilderness, in a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground will become level, and the rugged place a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass wither, and the flower fades, but the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely people are grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord stands forever. You bring good tidings to Zion. Go to the high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice and shout. Lift up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. I'm going to sing two songs. The first one is What Can I Bring? and then Let Him Reign. Stand. 
take the wrong path or we wander off. In fact, the book of Isaiah tells us all of us are like sheep that have wandered off. But the Lord comes and brings us home. The Lord calls us. Let's come back and serve him as king as we come in repentance now. Together, let's pray. Lord God, we have sinned against you. you. We have done Thank evil in your, your sight. sight. We are sorry and repent. repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our second Bible reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region, preaching the baptism of the repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John 
wore clothes made of camel hair and a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Good morning. It's been a strange year, hasn't it? There have been lots of jokes about what was the point of having a 2020 diary, or why are the shops selling glitzy party clothes when we can't go anywhere? Or how, in 2015, when anyone asked, where do you see yourself in five years' time, all of us would have got that one wrong. So here we are at the beginning of December. It's Advent again, the season of waiting and joyful anticipation. It's the time when everyone who celebrates Christmas in any way is looking forward to that. Even though it will be celebrated differently this year, we are looking forward to a break, maybe seeing family, enjoying good food, and giving and receiving of gifts and relaxing for a few days. We all look forward to those things every year. Some might be looking forward to other things too, perhaps a promotion, the birth of a baby, retirement or perhaps a holiday. For those who take our Christian faith seriously, those run alongside our celebration and anticipation of the birth of Christ our Saviour, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Of course, we believe he is always with us even when it might not always feel like it. But we especially look back to those events of 2,000 years ago or more, back to the Jews waiting for the Messiah to be born, back over those precious words of prophecy and promise. We sense their hope and anticipation, and then the joy as we read once again of the events around his birth. Then we think of our own faith, our own journeying with God, Jesus being born into our own hearts and lives, and we look forward to his return, which we believe will happen some unknown day, even though the specific details might seem a bit vague. This year, of course, our waiting is different, and it has an urgency we've not known before. We find ourselves united as a nation, as a world, alongside others, some of whom we have almost nothing in common with at all, except we all share this waiting. We're waiting for an end, or at least control, of this frightening virus, COVID-19. It has dominated our lives and routines, stolen loved ones, left others ill or weak, and has caused great financial hardship, exhausted the NHS and dominated the news for almost the entire year. This year, along with any other waiting, most of us are waiting for a vaccine. We're waiting to see and hug family and friends again, waiting to return to work, for our university students to be able to study and live normally together. Hospital staff are waiting for a time when they are less stressed and when they don't have to see the kind of suffering they are helping people through now. We're waiting to travel. We want to go to the pub or the theatre once again and a whole lot of other things some of which will never be quite the same again because of people who are no longer with us, because of jobs that have been lost, because plans have been put on hold, perhaps we're scared of becoming ill or worried that the people we love might catch the virus. It's not a place we want to be in, so our collective waiting this Advent has changed. It is urgent and at times it is desperate. We just want things to get back to normal. We want the familiar life we've taken for granted. If we could time travel back to the time of Isaiah, the Old Testament prophet, we might meet a group of people who were also desperate and missing what was familiar and being taken for granted. A group of people alienated from their homeland. They were the people of Israel, taken captive and exiled in Babylon. The temple in Jerusalem was very much at the heart of their faith. And not only had they been taken away from that place, but it had also been destroyed by the Babylonians alongside the city itself. It seemed as if their faith and the nation of Israel had come to an end. The Israelites had no temple. They were forbidden to offer sacrifices as they normally would have done to atone for their sins. They felt miserable and dejected. 
we read in Psalm 137 about how their captors mocked them and told them to sing some of their songs. Their response was, how can we sing the songs of the Lord in this strange land? How could they sing? How could they rejoice when they felt they had literally lost everything? They felt in despair, yet they went on to find new ways of worshipping together, different ways to express their faith, new ways to pray and study together. Although our own experiences have been very different to theirs, we too have had to change how we worship and practice our faith, haven't we? We've had to worship much more at home using our phones and computers instead of all together in the church. Just as they couldn't offer sacrifices, we haven't been able to share Holy Communion together. Many of the Psalms were written in that time of history of the Israelites, new songs for a new situation, new songs to inspire hope and reinforce their faith in God, new songs to unite them and give them a sense of purpose. Songs have meant a lot to us too. For some, it has been the blessing song. For me personally, it has been John Rutter's song, May the Lord Bless You and Keep You, which has inspired me and kept me going. Words, songs and videos have been shared during our waiting time. We are waiting and we don't know how long for. For the Israelites, it was decades before they could return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple, and some of them would not have seen that day. Some of the prominent biblical writing from their time is our Bible passage for today from Isaiah 40. The writer was a prophet, a person of great insight, who could interpret the events and circumstances of the times, someone who could tell if the nation's behaviour and ways would do them harm. The prophets were messengers called by God to speak words of wisdom to those in authority. Isaiah was active as a prophet in the time of King Ahaz. Ahaz was not a follower of Israel's God. He practiced paganism and he also promoted idolatry. He refused to follow Isaiah's advice or protect the nation of Israel. Isaiah was a courageous prophet who spoke out. He denounced the sins of the nation and called out for justice to be practiced by God's people. He spoke an exciting message into the future. Isaiah's words ring out and are full of relevance for those people. Comfort my people, Israel, says your God. Proclaim that her hard service has been completed, her sin has been paid for. And then he goes on to prophesy about the voice calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. He was looking forward, bringing a message about the coming Messiah, the coming Saviour. And as we know, looking back, those words were fulfilled. The Saviour and the Messiah did come. It happened hundreds of years later, when yet again God's people were oppressed, living under the occupation of the Romans this time, hoping and longing for the oppression to end, remembering the words from this prophecy and others, words about one coming to rescue and save them. Into this situation comes John the Baptist, as we read from Mark's Gospel this morning. He was the one Isaiah was speaking about, and in John's Gospel, he clearly says, I am the voice of the one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. So it began, John baptising people, encouraging repentance, and telling the people to get ready, because one who was coming was even greater, Jesus the Messiah. Here, in these two readings, hundreds of years apart, we have the stamp of authenticity of both of them. One written hundreds of years before the other holds the prophecy that there will be one coming, calling in the desert, that the Lord would come and that the people needed to wait, make way. And then the other, the, world's, the, the words of the wild man in the desert fulfills the prophecy. I am the one, says John the Baptist. I'm that voice in the desert. It's about to happen. The prophecies of old are going to come true now in our time. Get ready, people. Repent. Turn away from your sins. Things are going to be different. The Lord is coming. And then there was Jesus. And as we read in Mark, Matthew and Luke's Gospels, also being baptised by John. And so his ministry begins. Jesus came into that situation and brought hope. You could say a new day had dawned. 
Like John, his cousin, he was no ordinary man. He was also he he wasn't popular with the learned religious leaders, sometimes going against their teaching, and his values were often at odds with theirs. He wasn't the kind of leader they were expecting, someone who would rise up and lead a rebellion against the Romans. His purpose and kingdom were very different, as we know. Let's recognise him and turn to him in this our own time of waiting. Let's recognise our own need to repent, seek forgiveness of our own sins and follow him more closely. Jesus came to heal and restore the hurting and the broken people. So let's bring to him all our concerns for our weariness and brokenness. Let's pray for those whose lives and livelihoods have been ruined by the virus. As the Israelites adapt to their circumstances they were in, we need to continue to practice our faith in new ways, even though it might seem hard and tiring at times. In our Isaiah reading, it refers to humankind being like grass and faithfulness like the flowers of the field, which withers and falls, but the words of the Lord endure forever. Let's continue to read his words, his promises, and hold on to them. Be encouraged by the readings and songs available to us. Keep encouraging one another. Keep smiling and keep singing. The God who sustained and restored that community can sustain and restore us as individuals and as a community. I'm going to read verses 9 to 11 again. Zion, you are bringing good news to your people. Go up on a high mountain and announce it. Jerusalem, you are bringing good news to them. Shout the message loudly. Shout it loud. Don't be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, your God is coming. The Lord and King is coming with power. He rules with a powerful arm. He has set his people free. He is bringing them back as his reward. He has won the battle over their enemies. He comes to take... He takes care of his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have little ones. Say to the town of Crawley, the people of Broadfield, your God is coming, your God is here. May he bring them back, all those who have wandered away, all those of the flock who have scattered. May he gather those lambs in his arms like a shepherd keeping them close to his heart. Let's pray together. Lord, as we journey on into Advent, may we be encouraged by the words we can read and sing in this our strange new time and place. Please sustain and restore all of our church community to ourselves, to each other and to you, and restore those among us in Broadfield who are in need, all who wait desperately in so many ways. May we be willing to share your love in words and action during this season of Advent. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now is the time to trust God, to follow his way, to hear his voice, his calling. We can trust God and declare our faith and trust in him now as we say together the words of the Creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're now going to sing our next song, which is Forever. Choose for 
His love endures forever And by the grace of God We will carry on His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God is faithful Forever God is strong Forever God is John the Baptist prepares the way for the coming of the Messiah by helping people to realign their lives. Let us pray. God of cleansing and liberating power, give us the courage and perception to see ourselves as we really are and repent of our sins. May we be cleansed and renewed and may your church be cleansed and renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of faith and science, we turn to you in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic because we trust you. We trust you because you listen to our prayers. We trust you because you act in our lives and you have acted in our interest in the past and for our welfare. And we thank you because you are the God of revelation in faith and science. God of knowledge and wisdom, we ask that you would dwell with the scientists who are working so hard. We thank you for the recent developments of the vaccine seen to be distributed in our lands. We pray for the logistics of that. We pray that it will all go smoothly and people will volunteer and come forward and help. Lord, we also pray and thank you for those that have been working so hard to develop COVID-19 therapies and treatments. We thank you for them. God of wonder, grant the scientists the way to have inquisitive minds and combine that with love, their love for science and love for people so they may be able to develop something better treatments and God of all creation at this time we think of the coronavirus patients we pray for the doctors and the nurses and the healthcare workers we ask that you will be a fence around the healthcare workers as they have many pressures keep them safe keep them strong and may they know strength in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love and faithfulness, may every family be surrounded and upheld by your presence. May conflicts be healed. And we pray that many acts of kindness may be evident. God of wholeness, you bring reassurance and healing and you bring hope. We pray for all those that are suffering, for the weak, that they may know strength, for the frail, patience, for the distress, tranquility of mind, and the balm of your Holy Spirit. We especially pray for Anne Quirk. We pray, Lord, that she may have good days and not bad days. We pray that she may have the treatments and medications that she needs. So, Lord, sustain her and Alan. And we pray for all the family, that they may know your peace at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of warmth and brightness, we praise you for the many, many blessings that we have. And Lord, we thank you above all for coming to save us and to set us free. 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. We now sing in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. service we would have the offertory. We can't do that. The reality is we're not getting on the plate giving, we are not received the same income as a church and yet bills still need to be paid. One way we can give is by using this code to donate money to the church. It's quite simple, why not give it a go? It's fine for one off and please use it as often as you like. But the best thing is to give is by standing order to the church. So if you do want to know more, why not have a word with me 
or Deirdre or Peter or somebody from the DCC and they can advise you further. It is a concern and I share it in this part of the service. It's not a notice, it's all part of our church family news. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, a generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. Of your love, we serve a wonderful God. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found. I see in thee will be stripped away by the power of your love.
the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We have our usual prayer meetings on Monday and Thursday on Zoom at 7pm and at 8pm on Wednesday we have our quiz, questions, get together and it's a time just to enjoy each other's company. So I wish you well, do let me know if you need any help with something. Please also do come and join us in the afternoon service for 4pm where we'll have Holy Communion. Deirdre and I will be at the church from 3pm ready to uh, receive any toys for the um, work of S FSW, the fa families in need. So we wish you a wonderful week and may God richly bless us all.